Tonight, Chief Justice and Attorney General trade blame over the failure of the justice system to expedite prosecution of Galamse criminals as it emerges more than 140 cases are still pending before the courts. Your leadership, I therefore respectfully call on you to direct all judges sitting on Galamse cases to conclude the cases, the hearing of which have started within one month from the commencement of the legal year. On the issue of delays in Galamse cases, the Attorney General will acknowledge that our engagements have shown that the delays often come from the work of prosecutors. We are the latest with just eight days more to go before organized labor shuts down the country with its indefinite anti galamse strike. And Top Story is always brought to you by Telecell, connecting energies, holy insecticide spray and coil. Enjoy a holy sleep. The anti galamse pressure has reached fever pitch. Even the Chief Justice is feeling it. With just eight more days for organized labor to shut down the country with its indefinite strike. The Chief Justice has today been trading blame with the Attorney General over the failure of the justice system to expedite prosecution of galamse criminals. It has emerged there are more than 140 cases still pending before the courts without resolution. The Attorney General Goffredi Boadami blames it on the judges. Listen to him speak at the Judges and Magistrates Conference today. Legal mining known as Galamse continues to wreak incalculable damage to the forest reserves and river bodies of the country. A major setback to the struggle against Galamse is the rate of education and punishment of offenders. The deterrence of Galamse sought to be achieved by the Amendment to the Mineral Survival Act in 2019 by requiring a punishment for a minimum of 15 years plus a heavy fine in the case of a Ghanaian and a minimum of 20 years plus a hefty fine for a non Ghanaian is not aided by the tardiness of our courts in completing Galamse cases. Convictions are secured, but they come in trickles. Currently, with 140 cases of illegal mining involving over 850 accused persons are pending in courts in the western, eastern, Ashanti, Geta, Accra, and upper east regions of Ghana. Some have been pending since 2020. This situation, with all respect, cannot be right. We are in urgent national crisis, and all citizens and institutions with any form of role to play must be called upon to act. Your leadership, I therefore respectfully call on you to direct all judges sitting on Galamse cases to conclude the cases the hearing of which has started within one month from the commencement of the legal year on 10th October 2024. <laughs> Reasonably, it can be done. But of course, it's always subject to the discretion of the courts. And the judges are in control of the court rules. And as I said, justice dispenses in accordance with the rules of procedure and the law. So, as far as rules of procedure permit, so be it. But the Chief Justice Getu Tokono will have none of that. She says prosecutors at the AG's department are to blame. Petitions about delays through and ending adjournments of cases. There's no need for a court to adjourn a case after the case management conferences for mention. My firm view developed from 20 years of sitting as a trial judge and appellate judge is that it should not be the norm that parties are made to dress up, leave their businesses, spend money traveling, and spend time just sitting in a court premise only to hear the title of their case called out and told to come back another date. On the issue of delays in Galamse cases, the Attorney General will acknowledge that our engagements have shown that the delays often come from the work of prosecutors.
Joining me on the line right now is the Deputy Attorney General, Alfred Tiyayibwa. I'm also joined by a former Attorney General, Nia Yikotu, who also joins me right now on this very important matter. Alfred Tiyayibwa, let me start with you. I just heard there in that clip uh, from the CJ that in his head discussion with the Attorney General, there is an agreement that it is the fault is with your prosecutors, the delay we are talking about. Do you concede, accept that? Thank you very much, Evans. When it comes to criminal prosecution in court, basically you are talking about three parties. You are talking about the prosecution, you are talking about the defense, you are also talking about the court. But if you look at these three personalities I'm talking about, the one with the power to control proceedings is the judge. And definitely you have, you have instances where you, the, the delays may also come from our side as prosecutors. And so I don't think CJ is wrong on, on, on this call, but it's a tripartite system where each of the parties within that setup has a role to play. So a tripartite system, but the Attorney General puts it on the judges. In fact, to the point that she's now asking the Chief Justice to direct the judges to deal with the cases within one month when they return from the legal vacation. I think the judge has said, if you look at the three parties, the one with the power to control proceedings is the judge. And so if the judge insists that he's going to go on with the matter, whether parties come or not, or whether lawyers come or not, it is within the power of that judge so to do. Even if you are uh, ready to prosecute the matter and the, the court or the judge is not ready to hear you, you cannot go, go on with it. So you're looking at a situation where the judges control their court. They, they, they've been doing all this while, but when it comes to these special cases, we won't, we, won't, we won't have them heard expeditiously. Yeah, but we've seen many cases, not even only in the, the prosecution of Galamsey cases, but in other instances where prosecutors go to court, ask for adjournments, persistent adjournments that they're asking for. They're sometimes not even showing up at all. They're asking for more time to complete investigations. In that case, what do you expect the judges to do? Yes, that's why I earlier indicated that you may have instances where the adjournments may be occasioned by the prosecution, whether police prosecutors or lawyers from the Attorney General's office. But the power to control proceedings rests with the courts. And so if the courts are to impose dates, so to, so to speak, on the parties, then they have no option but to comply with those orders. I can cite one example. When we, we did Aisha Wan's case, it took barely one year to finish that particular case. And that was because of the... Of witnesses. That was because of the judge? The judge insisted on, on her timelines. And I'm also to commend counsel for the defense in that particular case. They also comply with all the orders that the court made. So I don't they within a year, even though it was a complex matter, we were able to finish that particular case. But, but if you take what the CJ is saying, though, Considering, of course, and the Attorney General himself places this in the context of a national emergency, it, it, it paints a picture of how urgent this is. If the CJ is right, then there are cases from the Attorney General's office being prosecuted by some of your employees there who are not attaching as much seriousness as the AG himself is painting to these cases that they are, they are prosecuting. You have admitted there are some. Isn't that, a, if it's even one, isn't that one too many? It's not about not being, not they being serious with the prosecutions, but they may have a reasonable excuse. But excuse may, may, be, may be many. I can tell you, all the attorneys in the ministry who handle criminal prosecutions are always serious with their prosecutions. But we have instances where attorneys may go to court and they may pray for an adjournment. But you're, 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 making, you're, you're making excuses for them, Chiaibwa. Uh, I'm not making an excuse. I concede on that point that we may have instances. But I can tell you, whether police prosecutors or lawyers from the AG's office, a lot of them go by the orders of the court. And so if the courts are to give specific timelines, who are you to obey the orders, disobey the orders of the court? And that, that's the point that the AG is making. That moving forward, the judges, they have the power to control proceedings. And so they should make sure that when it comes to the position of cases, they, they, they exercise such powers. I mean, considering that you can see that, yes, there may be uh, some prosecutors who may not be attaching that serious, that they all may be delaying the process themselves, and you're asking the Chief Justice to do something about it, I mean, what have you done internally to get every single prosecutor handling a Galamsey case to attach the utmost seriousness and priority to it? 
Yes, if you are handling a, 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 a lamp say case as a prosecutor and you're giving the date by the court, you have no excuse not to be in court. You must be in court and do your work as a prosecutor. And if they don't, I'm asking you, you, you are very clear on what you want the CJ to do. What is internal directive? What, what sanctions are in place? What Definitely mechanisms are you putting in place? Definitely, a prosecutor that's not going with the prosecution without any reasonable excuse, internally, we may want to create that, that prosecutor or, or that attorney to find out why on a specific date he was in court or he was not in court or he was in court but didn't prosecute a specific matter. And so internally, we are looking at all those things. But we have insisted that when you are given a date as a prosecutor, you must be in court to do your job as a prosecutor. Even if you are not going, especially from our ministry, and you have another colleague lawyer within the same group who is also well versed with the matter, he should be in court to prosecute the matter. Please stay with me. I want to bring uh, former Attorney General Nyeriko to into the conversation. Uh, and you've been an Attorney General before. You've heard the Chief Justice. You've heard the Attorney General. Where do you stand? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would even and the uh, uh, personnel involved. We have the judge, we have the prosecutor, we have defense counsel, we have interpreters, we have witnesses, we have the accused, and then what I would call unnecessary adjournments. If uh, the others are ready, but the judge has gone on the conference <laughs> for which reason she is not sitting. The case cannot come on. If the prosecutor fails to appear in court and the defense counsel is ready, the case cannot go on. If the defense counsel is ready and the prosecutor is not there, the case cannot go on. You can have a problem of interpretation. Sometimes we joke with this Ghana uh, language that we talk about. You see somebody who wants to give evidence in God, and they tell you there's no interpreter who can interpret. The case must have to suffer an adjournment. You are waiting for a witness to appear in court. The witness fails to appear. Or for some reason, the accused person himself is not well. You need all these people to be present at each point of the time for cases to proceed. And therefore, you cannot put the blame only on one uh, 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 party. Again, remember that with the lower courts, it is not the prosecutors at the attorney general's department who go to prosecute. In the few cases, they do. But for magistrate and circuit courts, you have police prosecutors, mainly who prosecute on behalf of the attorney general. So you cannot also put all the blame on the agent's department. He might have done his work. The police uh, head of pros prosecutions and police, judicial police or JUPO might have done their work. And yet the prosecutor who is supposed to be in court says he's attending a funeral in the Volta region so he cannot come to court. You know, so uh, until we are able to deal with all these matters, we cannot blame only one one party. They are all involved. A judge will not sit and he will never tell anybody. The people will travel from wherever they are coming from only to get to the court to be told that the judge is attending a conference or the judge is not sitting today. That is all. They never give you information before the time. Even if you get to court early and you are waiting and you ask the court clerk, what is the position with madame? It appears it's taking a little while. He says, I don't know. We have to wait. I have no instruction to adjourn. And you may have to sit down to about 11 o'clock before you are told that oh, Madame has called from the house that is unable to come. So it all has to do with how do we manage adjournments? That is the main issue. I mean, how I, do we manage adjournments? Yeah, and I, I know you say that, but let's put this in context. You're talking about Galamse, considering its catastrophic effect of what we're dealing with right now. I find it scandalous that they are, they are you know, trading blames right now on who is to blame for why cases before the courts dealing with Galamse criminals have stalled. Where is the deterrence in that? Isn't that wh wh why this is important? I'm giving you the background of adjournment. What we are talking about is nothing more than adjournment. So why do the, the cases suffer adjournment? 
And I'm telling you that together, this, these are the issues. Again, where you have a judge who is, who is quick to grant an argument and is not ready to even proceed in the absence of one of the parties, then you get this thing happening all the time. But that is why I always say that sometimes when you have, you ask a superior court judge to go and sit in the lower court and deal with cases day to day, they, they do those things, you know, very fast because they won't take any, you know, uh, tricks from any young lawyer who comes to stand in front of them giving findings of excuses and arrest. And, and, we've and that seen is the attitude that the judges should adopt. Uh, on another point, on there that... are cases where a judge will tell the, the accused person that, look, your lawyer is not here. We are going to go on with the case because it was you who briefed your lawyer. And so you know the case better. And you're a lawyer. Come on, go ahead. Ask questions. If you are having difficulty, I will help you with your cross-examination. The way questions will be put. So until we, we, we bring all these guys, you know, the dramatist personnel, as I call them, you know, together to make sure that we want to get cases ahead, uh, we're going to have difficulties. The Germans will continue. Do, do, do you suggest that the greater responsibility is with the judges? Um, I say I won't say that because the judge will come to court and the prosecutor will not be there. And, and you also touched on giving a dedicated court for this. One of the demands of organized labor is to have a, a special court to deal with Galamse issues. Do you back that? Will that solve the problem? Yes, I would. I would. I would back that. With clear timelines, with with no nonsense judges, who will not listen to any un, unnecessary, you know, excuses for adjournment, and want to proceed. I'm saying that we have we in our time, we've seen judges who would tell the accused person, "Yes, your lawyer is not here, but go ahead and do your own criminal case. I'm not going to wait for your lawyer." But the 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 the, the accused person will be in court. His lawyer will not be there. And because of that, they will attend the case. Why? Why should they attend the case? The agenda, if you, you people recall, when the these chief justice were discriminated, I was one of the very first persons who were called to make a, you know, a, a voice heard on the matter. And one of the things I said to her is that she should ensure that these unnecessary agreements must cease. For example, I have stopped going to court now. I do more from my house, but I have my genius who go to court. And, and, and I'm always beside myself with rage when they come and tell me that cases are being adjourned. I mean, uh, today, we had the Attorney General ask the Chief Justice to direct all judges uh, superintending over the 140 cases before them, as far as guarantee is concerned, to uh, deal with them within one month. Is that realistic? Well, I, I do not think that it is unrealistic. It all depends upon how many uh, witnesses, for example, the prosecution intends to call, how many witnesses the defense intends to call, and with a discovery where we all know what the evidence is going to be on either side, it's just a matter of allowing, you know, relying on your statements and getting prosecutions and cross-examinations done quickly. So it, it is not, it is not, it's not unlikely. It can be done. I'm saying that we need everybody's presence. If one is absent, and I've given you the example of interpreter, you will be in court, everybody is ready, and we want a fair interpreter. And you go to the court and tell them, oh, they don't speak God. They say they don't understand. The guy insists, I'm going to speak God. And therefore, the case must have to suffer an adjournment until we are able to get an interpreter. You remember it even happened in the Aisha one when some of the Chinese said they wanted to speak Chinese. And we had to go looking for interpreters. So it, all these people play a part in that drama which takes place in court. And if you don't get them at the same time, you know, nothing will get done. Nothing. Yeah. Get that. I want to bring in Alfa Chai Boy into this, the Deputy Attorney General. They organized labor asked for special courts dedicated to prosecuting offenders involved in illegal mining. Does the Attorney General's office support this? Yes. There are special courts meant purposely to deal with the Lamsey cases. If I'm not mistaken, I think over 14 of them 
each region has one court dedicated to uh, mm. illegal mining cases. That is what I know for now. But I don't think it's, it's a wrong call because we need courts that will be dealing with Galamse matters. I know that's a fact. But if you go to the Boon region, the Ashanti region, and the other regions, there are specific courts here marked for Galamse matters. Well, and as you know, since I have you on, Africa, as you know, organized labor have declared, labor. Have declared an indefinite strike starting on the 10th. Uh, of this month, I and there have been protests planned for tomorrow too. Uh, from the Attorney General's point of view, you that definitely you're looking at this. In fact, you are even prosecuting some of the demonstrators who uh, breached the public order regulations around protests. How are you approaching resolving this matter? Because, of course, you have a voice. You, you still represent government. I have your own. I need to ask you that. Uh, this this protest has been set for tomorrow, but also there is an indefinite strike. How are you approaching this? Yes, when it comes to the strike issue, I know that definitely the issues have been brought on the table. They have been studied, and at the appropriate time, definitely what decision that we, 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 we arrive at, we communicated to the public. In terms of the prosecution, you all know that these matters are before the court of law. Someone that keeps, in fact, that keeps us have been remanded uh, into prison and police custody, we back to court on Monday or Tuesday, then we'll continue with the prosecution. A demand is to impose a state of emergency. Uh, I know uh, when such issues of constitutional uh, consequence is being considered by the president, the AG's opinion will be sought. I wonder if that has happened. Has the president been called to ask, is this something we should do and what? how do we do within the constitutional remit? Definitely, the demands are on the table and they are being studied. And so when a decision is uh, taken on them, it to be communicated to the public. Does the Attorney General's office have a position on the state of emergency on the back of the Galamse menace? We do not have to state our position, given the, the position of His Excellency the President. And so when such a decision is taken, definitely it will be communicated. Uh, thank you very much. Afrika Ibuade uh, is a Deputy Attorney General. Ni Ayiko Otu is a former Attorney General who joined us. And as we speak, there's a press conference just about to start. Uh, and a group that uh, is protesting the what is currently happening with the Galamse issue is uh, planning to embark on the three-day protest tomorrow. And they're called the Concerned Citizens Against Galamse. And that protest is just about to start the uh, police service have issued a statement a very detailed statement on this planned protest tomorrow uh, james abaji is with me in the studio what are we learning from the police on this well evans the police uh, have been uh, two uh, key issues detailing the various routes the protests will be happening through in accra and also their additional responsibility on this days that the protests will be happening so let me take you through the route According to the statement, the uh, uh, demonstration will begin from Okonglo near the University of Ghana Stadium. Uh, that is the, convening, uh, the converging point for the demonstrators to travel through Okonglo traffic light towards Shiashi uh, uh, and the standard authority traffic light through Shangri-La to airport traffic light and then right to the Association International School through the National Service Secretariat and merge into the Kaukudi traffic intersection. It will continue through Kanda Highway to the Accra High School Junction and also move through the Electoral Commission Office, go to the Ridge Hospital and through the AU Runabout to Parliament House and proceed from there through the Osu Cemetery and finally and at the Accra Sports Stadium. And the police car park. is reminding them about their responsibilities under the law. Exactly. The responsibility to make sure that they do this according to uh, the law and also uh, reminding them that the police will be closing routes that could. Uh, if taken, could bridge public peace as, as, as also uh, result in uh, vehicular traffic. And so let me go through that point for you. They said the police have an additional responsibility to, one, assist in the proper conduct of any special event by directing the route of such event to prevent obstruction of pedestrians or vehicular traffic. They would also disperse at any special event where... Uh, the police has reasonable grounds to believe that a breach of peace is likely to occur 
or even a breach of the peace has occurred or occurring in order to prevent violence, restore order and preserve peace and may cause to be closed such streets or parts thereof uh, to pedestrians or vehicular traffic or both uh, to make sure that everything go in order. They, uh, as you said, advising the protesters to adhere to all of this directive to make sure that this goes on as peaceful as possible okay uh, and the police is very clear mm. that if anything happens that leads to damage to public property the organizers will be held responsible one of them uh cam ritego is a convener of the concern citizens against galamse uh, joins us on the line right now and uh, can re- clarify for me i've seen this protest is also dubbed free the citizens protest uh, but i've also seen a police statement that this has also been planned to protest against illegal mining which is it Okay, good evening, sir, and thank you very much for having me. Um, now, the underlying reason or the main reason why we are protesting is to say no to Galamse or illegal mining, right? And that is the main reason why we are protesting. However, unfortunately for our brothers and sisters who wanted to um, have their voices heard on the issue, had been arrested and remanded by the police. So it was only fair and right that we equally make sure that we we fight for them and say that free the citizens. And that is how come you are hearing two different, you know, uh, tags or quotes to it. But, I mean, the underlying reason for the protest is to say, say no to Galante. It needs to stop now. Stop Galante now. Mm, and how are you planning to keep tomorrow's protest peaceful? So um, we have been in conversations with the police. Um, they, we went through the Public Order Act together, right? The police has the responsibility of maintaining law and order and providing security, right, to ensure that people do not um, sort of people do not break the law as is. And of course, our responsibilities as organizers have been stated clearly and spelled out to us, right? So. Um, we are working with the police, and we have said that uh, with the publicity that we are gaining for this particular protest, we are using the opportunity to tell people and sound a strong warning, really, for people who have made up their mind that they are going to come and portray this protest. Oh, goodness. I, I just lost him there. Uh, Camry, do I have you? Okay. Right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. You're talking about people planning to infiltrate. Exactly. I'm saying that so we are using the opportunity to send a strong warning to people who want to come out and infiltrate the protest for reasons best known to them and then cause trouble and mayhem for us. That responsibility is upon us and we have said that immediately there is a whiff or hint of anybody of that sort. We are handing them over to the police without batting an eye because what we are doing is supposed to be peaceful but ensure that our voices are heard so we are going according to the law with the law by the law mm. and is going to enjoy their rights uh, the right to protest everybody equally has the right to go about their day peacefully so really we are working with the police on this. okay uh, camry thank you very much camry tego is a convener of the concerned citizens against uh, galamse uh, they will be hitting the streets tomorrow to protest in a related development uh, though the attorney general godfrey Badami has defended government decision to prosecute members of the democracy hub following some unlawful incidents recorded during their protests against illegal mining as a renowned demonstrator myself one of the founders of the alliance for equitable governance who in 2009 and 2010 embarked on many peaceful protests in Accra, I stand fully for the realization of the right to free expression. However, that right is always exercised subject to the injunction contained in Article 12, Clause 2 of the Constitution, that is, the public interest and respect for the rights and freedoms of others. The peace and territorial integrity of our nation at this time, two months before election 2024, is far greater than the pursuit of any parochial political goals just as the right to free expression is no more paramount than the right of others to access essential services and the duty of the police to maintain the peace of Ghana. As I always say, freedom is not free. It is accompanied by serious responsibilities, and it is up to the entire nation, particularly the judiciary, to ensure that the gains and triumphs of the past remain intact for generations of Ghanaians unborn. And that is Attorney General Godfrey Badam. News night starts right now.